This is Sci-Fi Grenade version 2. And I'm providing a reference image. Again, you can download that from the link in the description. And we're going to go ahead and model this and we'll put on these viewport display colors. I'm going to work a little quick because there's a lot of stuff to do. But I will try to explain it and you can always pause the video and uh, watch it a couple times if there's anything that you miss. It's straightforward, but we've got a lot to do. So bring the reference image into Blender and press S3 to scale it three times and then just grab it and sort of center it around this dot here and bring it back a little bit on the Y axis and press one to look from the front orthographic view and we will get going on this. All right, so to start off, let's press Shift A, Mesh Cylinder and let's make sure that we're using 22 vertices. I'm going to move this just a little bit over like that, roughly like that. Go into edit mode by pressing tab and S to scale and just get the sides to line up as best you can. And then go into wireframe and press one for vertex selection. Press uh, B and box select down there and pull that right up to the bottom. Okay, it doesn't matter where these ones are for the time being, but with that selected, we're gonna press control B to bevel and pull and you probably start off like that and it'll look like this and just roll your mouse up a few times and keep pulling until we hit see this line this about this fourth row of vertices hits that and I might roll up another couple in there you know a few to get it nice and smooth and it looks like that all right deselect box select all of these press B box select all of those and let's pull those down until they are here and that should be fine so we are going to be deleting those later okay now we're going to do the top part as well I'm going to with all that row selected I'm going to shift D to duplicate and I'm going to pull that up to the bottom of those I'm going to press E to extrude and pull up to there and then this is a little indentation here so let's pull up E to extrude and pull up to about the middle of that and then E to extrude and we'll pull all the way up to here the bottom of that section and E to extrude we'll pull up to the top and we'll leave it like that for the time being let's go back into solid view and there's a face here that we can delete. Let's delete that face and press three for face selection. Let's delete this face, X faces, and let's delete this face, X faces. All right, back into front view and we're in edit mode. Let's go back into wireframe and we're on the uh, face selection. Let's press C and with your mouse, just sort of paint over, drag over those. Now that should get the back ones as well. So make sure we've got the same ones selected on the front and the back. X faces. We'll get rid of those and we'll have that cutaway section. We should have, I guess, four of them in the front and in the back. And let's come over here, press C. We're going to get rid of these side ones here. You can hit escape and move over. Press C again. It won't lose the selection and get rid of those X faces and it should do it uh, on the front and the back so we now have that all right come up to the top and we're going to get rid of these ones here and the diagram's a little bit off but that's okay we're just going to get rid of that and we should be okay all right if we go back into solid view and we go control 2 that's the same thing as coming over to the modifiers and going to the subdivision surface and putting on two here we'll get this i'm going to shade smooth and we'll add some more edge loops in a bit and we could do it right now actually i'm going to drag an edge loop up here this is a long distance uh, for this subdivision to work so we'll put some support there that'll help with that little crease that's probably good enough for the moment and let's go ahead and give this some thickness now you can use solidify but I think I'm just going to come into edit mode 
A to select it all, and I'm going to extrude to give it its final thickness. All right, so I'm going to press E, Alt S, and I'm going to pull, and that's going to move it in and just choose how thick you want this to be. I'm just going to go to something like that for my thickness. Now we need some more edge loops in here. All right, I may turn the subdivision off for this. I can deselect. I'm going to drag an edge loop towards the inside, not right to the edge, towards the outside. Sort of an equal distance if, I, if you can get it close. And up here, towards the outside and inside. And up at the top, it'll go all the way around towards the inside and towards the outside. Let's put the subdivision back on and it should it look really cool. Just like that. All right, good stuff. All right, let's go ahead and make all of this top stuff here. It's pretty much circular, and so it's easy to do. So come in here, and the way I always like to do this is to steal a circle from here. Shift Alt and click that. It goes all the way around, and Shift D to duplicate it, and just pull it up out of the way, and press P, separate by selection, and go back into object mode, and then into edit mode of this one. One for vertex selection. It's just easier to see the line. And we're going to scale it in a little bit and we're going to pull it down in because this lower black piece is inside there and something like that. We're going to do this piece right here. Okay. Now the subdivision is on. I'm going to click on the monitor there. So just to turn it off temporarily, E to extrude and pull up to here. And I'm going to come in to make this piece E and S. So you can see the vertices coming in. E to extrude and come up to here. And then that's it for that piece. The next one is a separate piece. So let's go back in a solid view. And I like to close this off a little bit. E and S just like that. So the other piece can fit on top of it or inside. And, and it looks better that way to me. All right, let's do some beveling. Press 2 for edge selection. Shift Alt and click this edge and this edge. And Control B to bevel. Pull, roll back, there's two edges, three. Let's do the same on this right here. Control B, pull just a little bit, and we'll have that. We can shade smooth, we can throw on the subdivision to see what it looks like. It just looks look like it's you know inside there relatively snugly, and that's fine. So we'll leave it like that for now, and we'll go on and we'll do this piece next. So I'm going to steal a circle again, anyone will do. Take it, Shift D to duplicate, pull it up, scale it a bit if you want, P to break it out, and go into edit mode of this one, and one for vertex selection. Shut off the subdivision, look from the front, and we could actually start from the top and work down if we want on this one, because it's pretty much scaled to the right size. So let's do that. E to extrude and pull down, pull down straight. Okay, so it's looking a little funny, so I'm going to back up. I may have I may have done something. There we go. We can come to there. I'll go into wireframe. And then E and S and pull in to really as much as you want. Something around there. I'm going to be extruding out these parts. E to extrude and just come straight down. And pull it into this one. Now let's go back and have a look. All right. Oh, that's actually it's not bad at all. It's going to fit inside this one. And if you need to, you can come back to this one and say, well, I'm going to just pull it in a little bit more. Something like that. Okay, so we're making this part here. Let's close this off just a little bit. E and S, let's pull it in. doesn't matter how much. The white piece is going to fit in there. And then let's bevel these edges. So two, shift alt and click both of these edges and control B with three edges in there. And now we can do, let's go ahead and do these things. They're very simple. I just go Control R there and roll up maybe a total of three. So I have three edge loops selected there. You can grab them all and pull them up a little bit if you want to. And then Control B and pull to separate them. Roll back so you have just two edges going around for each of them. And then E and Alt S and either push or pull. Now, if they go funny, back up a little bit. 
select the whole thing and alt n recalculate outside and also you may have to merge by distance you may have done something funny and so i'm going to reselect those control b e and alt s and push and come out as much as you really want i'm not looking at the diagram right now and we'll get this nice smooth um, object okay let's do the rest of it and we'll come back and do those so just like before i'm going to steal a circle so i'll grab this one shift d to duplicate pull it up i can start scaling it down to there p to break it out though i'm going to have a separate material shut that off for now and let's go in select it and we'll just extrude this one's just extruded straight down and looks like it goes in fine and this one we're actually going to cap off so press f to make a face three for face selection and then we'll bevel it's just easier to bevel like this so do something like that and roll your mouse up a couple of times it doesn't matter how much i just want it a bit more rounded and put on the subdivision now you don't have to put on the subdivisions or you can try one because this will increase the polys for sure all right we'll do the last part on top and then we will um we'll we'll, uh, we'll do the other details well but but before we do that let's do these little circles that are in it these little insets or indents or whatever so select the top in face selection press i to inset and pull it into you want your first where you want your first groove i to inset pull it into where you want your second one and then i to inset one more time to get the main circle in the middle all right so we're going to be doing these round parts right there and this is where i want my edges if you want you can always shift alt and click an edge and press s and pull it out a bit shift alt and click i want both of them selected Control b and pull and roll back till you just have two uh, there like that and you don't want it narrow narrow like that and you probably don't want it huge just somewhere like like that something like that press e and gesture down in the z or pull down in the z now we're also going to want to put more edge loops so grab an edge and bring it in close but you don't have to hit the edge like parking a car just park it close but don't hit the edge don't hit the curb and you get that All right. don't forget to save along the way all right, it's time for what looks like sort of a baseball cap structure there. We're going to do that. And to do that, it's very easy. We're going to take another circle. So we're going to take this, shift D to duplicate, pull it up, scale it up maybe a little bit, P to break it out. So we have that thing there. Let's go into edit mode in one. And let's look from the top down. And I'm going to select some vertices. You can see that's the center one right there. I'm going to select one on the other side, one on the other side. Another one, another one. Maybe one more and one more, those. All right, so with those selected, we're going to press E to extrude, and we're going to pull out like this. And I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be inside this first uh, indent. Uh, let's see how far out. Yeah, kind of inside. All right, that's probably okay, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to extrude up a little bit like that. And then to make the rest of the baseball cap, I'm going to deselect and select just that face there and extrude up the rest of the way, something like that. Okay, let's focus just on this thing, slash key. Let's come underneath here and delete these faces. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and this one. We'll get rid of those. That'll straighten out the bottom a little bit. We'll do some more work on that in a bit. But let's take this, and we have to make a button here. Um, yeah, we'll just make it. We'll go back and look at the diagram in a bit. So let's go I to inset, pull it in a little ways, E to extrude, pull down. We'll scale it in. And I'm going to turn off the subdivision so we can see we're doing a little bit better. All right, so I'm going to start to bring the button out. But before I do, I'm going to do I one more time and have a little bit of a space there like that. I think it'll look better. And then E to extrude and pull up. And we want to come past this a little bit so the button sort of sticks up. And then bevel it back. Control B, pull. There's two. I'm going to roll up a couple of times like that. Let's put some edge loops on this. Press 2 for edge selection and Shift-Alt and click 
those two, control B and pull, but we only need three, so go back to three. We may need another edge loop down here. Uh, we may need a couple octi, so let's control R, bring an edge loop down. Let's look in, in with the subdivision. And it's looking fine like that. All right, let's add a couple more edge loops though. Control R, pull one down here just to tame that. And maybe one more here, not too tight, something like that is a pleasing view and it just blends in. Slash key to bring that back. Let's take this and let's push that on. And I mean, we may be off the diagram a little bit and if you want to, uh, we can scale that in the Z just to make it match the diagram a bit. I'm gonna actually globally scale the whole thing to match a little bit more and that'll actually push this part outside. I think that's still okay. And if you want to rotate it, you don't want it sort of straight. Uh, we need something that's perfectly circular to do this. So I'm gonna select this piece, go into edit mode and select it and shift S, cursor to select it. Now move my 3D cursor just a little, little bit. So I can now take this and I can just rotate this in the Z. And that should be fine. Or to be more exact, you can switch to 3D cursor uh, for your pivot and then rotate like that, or rotate more, whatever. And that's it. Let's just go back to median point, which is the default, and let's save. We'll put colors on in just a moment. Let's just come back and do these. It's just a very typical design, but it does increase the polys. So we're coming in here. I've got an edge loop. I'm gonna take this one and just pull it up just a little bit. So sort of even. All right, shift alt and click those faces right there. I'm gonna press I twice, I, I, pull in a little bit like that. And um, I might do that again. I'm gonna press I again and come in like that. E, Alt S and pull, that's coming out. So push to make them come in. You don't have to go like push forever, just come in like that so they're indented. Now they're round here and I want them to be more square and so I'm going to control R to drop an edge loop there and then control B to split it but roll back to two. So I have just one going up, one coming down and then just choose a pleasant shape and don't go too high up or it'll start to sort of pinch. So we could try that and we have that shape. A little bit, little bit different, I have a few less polys in there but that still looks just fine. All right, let's save that. All right, we're gonna start getting some colors on here now. All right, in the viewport display. So I'm gonna come over here, choose matte cap, and choose a matte cap that I like. I like this nice bright one. You may not, this may be a bot one. I'm not sure if it comes default in Blender, but I'm gonna use that. You could use any one that you want. Uh, but before we do anything, let's double check our polys. And you'll see that some of them are red and some are blue. So these red ones are flipped. So I'm going to come in here, Alt N, recalculate outside. And same thing for this part. Alt N, recalculate outside. Okay, everything is now facing the right way. So you can turn that off and we can come back to doing what we were doing. So this piece right here is sort of a dark block. So I need to come over here to matte cap and switch from material to object. And I'm going to come to the to the uh, object properties. Scroll down under viewport display. Change this from white, and just drag it down here until you get a color that you think is good. Don't go too far down; it becomes very dark. So that looks good there. And there's nothing else I can select and put that color on right now. So let's do the next sort of gray. So click on that. Come over here and drop that down. And I'm just sort of looking in my at my reference trying to get a similar color to that there and that's okay we can make this blue color we may need another edge dip we may not all right well let's let's see if i can get that blue and i may not be able to get it exactly so uh we'll just play with it until we get something that's pleasing i'm going to start with uh well yeah i think i'm going to i'm going to start with something like that for now all right uh this one here has an orange kind of color so just grab something that looks good to you and let's continue we're going to put these indents on here 
I'm going to go control 7 to look from the bottom, go into edit mode, 3 for face selection, and C for paint or circle select. So the middle line is right here. So I'm going to come out one or two, and I'm going to try uh, maybe not there. I'm going to try maybe there. So the middle line, so I skipped one. So let's see what that would look like there. And this middle line here. So do I have those in the right place? Middle line, skip one, and we have that second row. Okay. So just like that, back into or hit escape. I'm going to press I to inset, come in. And if they start to split apart into fours, just press I again. Hold shift and pull it in like this so that they're inside this outer edge. All right. Right click and choose loop tool circle or wherever your loop tools is located. And then switch to individual origins. That's very important. We're going to press S to scale again. And I want to make them small enough that they fit inside this square. All right. So you can go back and do it again. That's fine. All right. I'm now with those selected, going to press I to inset again. Hold shift. Just pull in a little bit. You're giving it sort of a double wall. Now I'm just going to angle it a bit so I can see this. I'm going to press E and Alt S and either pull or push. Well, it turns out it's pull. I'm pulling them in. I'm going to press S to scale a little bit, and that angles them a bit. Then I'm going to press I to inset again and make a smaller one in the middle, nice and small. E, Alt S, pull to make sort of a central hole. And we have that, similar to this. Color's not exact, but all right, save. Keep saving. Let's go on and do this side clip here. All right, so I'm going to press 3 to look from the side and select my object and find something that looks central. And I think that is central. Two there, two there. So let's bring the 3D cursor right there. And I'm going to bring in a plane to make this. Press 1 to look from the front and select it. Scale it down a bit. You can just press G to move it. And I'm going to rotate X90. I'll go into wireframe and I'm scale it and just press G and just match the size of this thing. Very similar to that. Don't worry about this edge right now. Let's focus on this one. 2 for edge selection and select that. And we're going to bevel this. I'm going to press 1, actually, so I can see my vertices a little bit better to make that curve. Shift, Control, B to bevel this. Pull. Split it to there, and then start rolling up. There's three vertices, four, five. And you can move your mouse around. You can see my curve. I'm just going to come to about there. Select it all. You can see it a bit better. All right, I'll grab these. I'm going to pull them. I do want it... Uh, I don't need it embedded actually right now. I'm going to pull to about there because there's an extension right there. So let's let's do that for now. Select it all. We'll give it some thickness just by pressing E to extrude and pulling out like this. Something like that looks probably okay to me. Select it all. Three to look from the side. This was the center point, so I'm just going to pull it until it seems like it's centered. Like that. All right. Let's come in here and uh, get a better vantage point. And we're going to delete this face. Press 3 for face selection. Select that face and X faces. 2 for edge selection and shift alt and click and we'll get that whole edge. I'm going to look from the side. I'm going to press E to extrude. S, Y. Scale in the Y. And pull out a little ways. I want enough room that I can put a bolt on either side, a small one. And S, Z and make it sort of an even width, something like that. And then let's extrude it a little bit in the X, just like this. And we take the whole thing and we'll just push it on until it makes contact. And it'll look like that, okay? Let's go back and focus on it with the slash key. And we're going to bevel this. And if you can't see it well, I'm just gonna come back to here. Uh, that is looking a little dark, but it may be fine. It made it made me think it was flipped uh, and it is flipped how about that so I'm going to select it all alt n recalculate outside I wasn't sure but it looked suspicious to me all right we're going to bevel the edges shift alt and click there and there and 
here and here, but this doesn't go all the way around. It stops there, so let's shift alt and click there as well. Make sure it goes all the way around and then choose a position and bevel, control B, pull. Have as many edges as you want. Um, I often do three, but I'm thinking I'm gonna do five on this. All right, but on this part, shift alt and click that edge, I'm gonna do three, control B. It's just, just such a simple part, three. And this part, control B with three. And that is our object, shade smooth. I will deal with shading in a bit, but because we're gonna do a whole we don't need to slash key to bring that back let's get this color on there in fact i'm going to lighten that up just a little bit i'm going to copy that hex code control c and i think a friend of mine told me there's an easier way to do this and i forget what he said and i'm going to paste that on there all right so let's do the whole all right looking from the front i'm going to bring in a cylinder and i want my cylinder to be about 22 vertices just like we use for the main body there so that way you'll get a rounder hole than if you use 16 or something but it may not matter to you just g and position this i can go into wireframe get the scale right rx 90 and that is going to be my hole okay so I'm going to select this and I'm going to come to the modifiers and choose Boolean. I think I'm going to put it on fast. Let's try that. We'll leave it on difference and with the eyedropper, choose that. And switching it over to fast will probably, I think, have this hole already solid with faces in there. Otherwise, you may have just a, a, a hole. All right, uh, we're going to bevel this edge now. So back to two edge selection, shift alt and click there and there. We need two, two clicks to select the whole thing because of the Boolean. There are two supporting edges. So do both the sides of that, control B and pull. And you can certainly have more than, than, uh, than three if you want, and that's okay. We could touch this up if we wanted to, uh, but I don't think it's really all that important. So we're gonna leave it. Now it is looking a little funny with the shading. I don't know, well, you can see that. And so what I would tend to do is put on weighted normal and normals auto smooth, and that should clear it up. And that's, that's just fine. Okay, we may want to have little bolts on this. I think that's a detail I might leave off for the time being. So we can go ahead and do this carabiner kind of clip here. Um, yeah, so let's just, uh, let's do this. Let's bring in a plane rotate x 90 and just g and drag it over here scale it down a little bit now i'm in edit mode all right scale that in the x scale it in the z and just start to get the scale that you want uh, i'm going to take this and press s and pull it in and just start matching the shape of this and it may not come out exactly the same uh so that's that's okay all right, so we're gonna bevel this, and we're gonna bevel this, but as you can see, this one has a bigger curve than this one. I'm gonna press one for uh, vertex selection, shift control B, and start pulling. And I'm probably going to use five edges, and I'm pulling like that, and I'm not getting the exact shape. Uh, I could take them and I can pull them up or something like that, but that's, I think, okay. I'm gonna grab the bottom, but I'm gonna to try to bevel more. Shift control B. I don't know why I did shift control N. And I'm gonna pull them in, but they're gonna, if they overlap before I get the curve I want, I'm gonna press C for clamping and they will hit. And then I can continue to roll my mouse up and get the curve that I want. But these vertices aren't Merge, so I'm going to press M to merge by distance. So whenever you put clamping on and they hit, that's when you have to do that. But this is what I have now. All right, kind of looks like it. I'm going to press X, only faces, not just faces, but only faces, and that will leave the edge all the way around. And that's the shape that I get. It's kind of a sci-fi shape. So I'm now going to convert this to a curve. I'll come over to the curves dialog box and under geometry bevel, under depth, I will hold shift and click and pull to the right until I start to get the size that I want for this. All right, so I'm just adjusting the size to what I think I'm going to want. Maybe a little bit thicker than that. No, pretty close to that. All right, so to make this black piece here, what I did is I 
come in here, select this point and this. I want a straight region. Now that's going to be a bit long, but we're going to start with that. I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate and P to break it out. So this is a separate piece of curve. I'm now going to adjust the thickness and make this a little bit thicker. I'm going to look from the front, but I don't want it to this long. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I can select this point. And by the way, I'm going to switch back to median point, but I'm going to switch over to normal. And now my Z axis uh, follows the, the direction or the, the normals of this or whatever. I'm going to pull this down to about there and select this one. I'm going to pull it up to maybe around there. I'm a little off the diagram, but that's OK. That looks good to me. So I want to convert this to a mesh. Uh, but before I do, I'm going to scroll to the top and change the resolution here. Instead of 12, I'm going to put down to 3. So we don't use so many polys when I right click and convert to mesh. All right, now I want to fill this up. So press 2, Shift, Alt, and click F to make a face. You can go back into global. And down here, Shift, Alt, and click F to make a face. And if they're both selected, I'm going to press Control B to bevel, roll my mouse back to 2, 3. And that's good. Shade smooth. And uh, this piece, we are going to convert to a mesh as well. Change the resolution to 3 again and right click convert to mesh and we're going to do this part and we'll put a subdivision on we could do that actually right now you try control one or control two it's up to you um, first of all though I'll take this and I'll, I want this block on it so I'm going to select that block come back to the viewport display and I'm going to copy that hex code over here so this one is going to be control V with that block and we're also going to do that piece and the way we'll do that is uh, I'm going to drop an edge loop in here and I'm just going to control B and pull but roll back so I have just two edges till I get the approximate size about there E alt S and push push it out a certain ways and in order to put black on this I need this as a separate object so I'm going to I want to get all of this so I'm going to control plus let me turn off this subdivision so you can see that better. I've selected all of that, and I need to press P and separate by selection. And now I can actually put on that color as a separate object. Control V. All right, almost done, but we need these little bumps in there. So let's come in here, Control R and Control B, or uh, yeah, bevel, <laughs> and then bring it up and then roll your mouse up a few times to get those little lines and then we're going to select as many of these as we really want I may have end up having a different number than on here control B to bevel roll back to just two like that E alt S and push and just push them out a little bit but we do want to bevel uh, this this end and down here this end as well control B pull and have three and that looks like that Okay, turn on the subdivision if you're using subdivision and it'll look like that and let's use let's see something like that color can we go a little bit more like that all right let's take that hex control C and let's paste it on there control V I didn't go in the right place so let's do that again and we have our clip all right, and do I have a subdivision on there? Let's turn that back on. And I'm going to grab all three of these pieces. For that, I can right click and set the origin to geometry, slide that over, and let's see, I want the, this part out front, right? So I'm just going to rotate this, something like that, and slide it in, and then just position it how you like. something like that uh, we could rotate it a bit like this as well if you want to do something different and then just take your time to position it and there we go okay all right so what do we got to do let's do this little indent here we can do that real quick and easy in wireframe shift alt and click uh, let's turn that off for the moment that edge there I didn't get it. I got 
not the inside one. There it is, that one there. And uh, I'm just going to do this by eye. Control B, pull with two E and Alt S and pull. And if I turn the subdivision on, we will need some edge loops. So drag an edge loop up close. Turn it off for a moment because it'll kind of slow things down. And drag that one. You can see the way the shading changes. And you have that. All right, let's bring in a cylinder with 32 vertices. And I'm going to scale this in the Z. And I just want to focus on this region in the middle. So I'm going to sort of get it right about in the middle with my 3D cursor there or my gizmo cursor right over there. I'm going to start adding edge loops. I'm just going to roll my mouse up and I'm looking for pretty much squares. I want to make them square and the size of these may differ a little bit and the position and that's probably going to be okay for what I want to do. And so, let's see. I'm going to do that one there. And this one, we can move those a little bit. Um, yeah. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select. We'll do the center button first. I'm going to select in face selection these vertices right there. Those faces, really. I press I to inset and pull that in. Right click, loop tool, circle. Scale it down. I to inset. Pull it in. I don't have a subdivision on right now. I'm just going to position this. I'm going to press E and Alt S and I'm going to pull it in. And now this one has a, a, a circle that sticks out. So I'm going to press I to inset again. Hold Shift. Pull it in a little bit. E and Alt S and I'm going to push it out like that. So we get this. I'm going to add my subdivision in just a moment. I'm going to slash key to view this. Let's get rid of this top vert, uh, face there and that face there. We'll get rid of those. And I want to make this look a little bit more like a circle. So I'm going to grab this vertex and slide it up. And that one and slide it down. And I'm going to take this one and press GG for edge slide. And make it look GG like a circle. Let's try Control 2 on this and Shade Smooth. And I have that. And how close are we? Well, it's hard to tell, but anyways. Okay, so we're going to do some other ones. And let's just think about where we can do them. Well, we can do them right here. I'm going to try selecting that stuff. And let's see if we can get a circle out of that. I to inset, pull it in. Loop tool circle. I'm going to switch to individual origin so I can scale them independently. I want these small, so I'm going to pull them in like this. And then I'm going to pull them down a little bit. I to inset. E, Alt S, and pull. Now, what do these ones do? They have a little round circle in the middle, actually. Okay. I to inset again. E and Alt S and push. Just come out just a little bit. Those may be larger than the ones that I have in my reference image, but you know, that's probably okay. All right, with that stuff done, I'm going to come into this, Shift Alt and click this edge and just drag it under so it's not visible. I could probably get rid of that because it's not going to be visible. Uh, let's focus on this. All right. Uh, I may need to merge by distance. I may have some other extra vertices. Uh, I'm not going to pull anything. I'm going to have that selected. Let's come back. And I'm going to actually get rid of some of this. Let's control plus X vertices. Let's come down to there. at this all right I'm gonna come down a little bit further to there okay so what have I got I've got that looks like what I've done is I have E and S come in a little bit E and come up to here and 
this is a separate object. So let's just do that. And I think I had what looked like a little bit of threading on there. So I'm gonna just roll up twice. Actually, I wanna do that in edge selection. So I'll select those edges. Control B and split them with two. E and Alt S and push for them to come out. But let's bevel this edge, Shift Alt and click. Control B and bevel, but with three. Okay. So that there, okay. Let's make this come in a little bit. Select this edge, E and S, just come in like that, which means I'm gonna to wanna to bevel that edge as well. You can bevel these if you want, but I don't think it's necessary. So we have that piece. And then we have a silver piece and we have the black. You know what I could do is I could, let's just take a, a, a circle from here and let's just shift D to duplicate and pull it up. And it's pretty much, I'm just gonna scale it a bit, pretty much the same as that. Let's just slide that under. So that's joined. We can shade smooth, but I'll close this off just a little bit. We're almost done and bevel this. And we're gonna put that black on there and I'll, and so let's do that. So it's this black here. So let's make sure we've got that. Come on over here and control C and let's paste that on there in the hex. Control V, oh, don't scale it. Let's save our work. Let's make this button green. We're gonna to have to select the faces and then I want it uh, to extend back. So we're gonna go control plus one or two times, probably two times is okay. P to break it out. And now I can put a green on there or whatever whatever you want. All right, something, something like that. Okay, save that, good stuff. I think all we're missing is that silver in there, so we're just gonna come in here and grab a circle. Shift D to duplicate, I'll pull it up a bit. P to break it out, and we'll look from the front in wireframe, or just in edit mode, and we'll scale it. So it's gonna be about that wide. I'm just gonna pull it down in. E to extrude, pull it up. Okay, we'll shade smooth. And we want that sort of silvery on there, which is this, almost this white. Actually, I think I'm gonna drop that down a little bit. And we'll take this and Control C. And we'll put it on there. Control V. Yeah, that might not, okay, maybe, uh, Maybe I will make it a little lighter instead of changing all the block. Do that. Okay, so I'll grab that. Make sure we got that on here as well. Okay, so I got that and that and then an arrow. Okay, we can do that. My 3D cursor's right there, so let's use a plane and let's rotate x90 bring it out to the front and scale it and let's have a look here so i want to make this arrow like that take this edge and drag it down okay i'm going to drop an edge loop there and control b pull it out just a little bit for the tip and let's drag an edge loop down here and uh, actually, let's have a look at this. So we're gonna make an arrow out of this, aren't we? So let's um, let's merge that with that. Merge it last. Take this one, merge it last. So we've got that. And what is, where's my wheel arrow? Okay. And let's get rid of these faces. In median point, I'm gonna SX. I want that a little bit wider, like that. To start with that, let's take this and extrude it back a ways, but uh, delete that, those faces. In fact, I think what I will do is, uh, let's see if we can delete these faces, and I will be left with that. And I'm going to take that whole thing in F to make a face, and I think I'll prefer that. And we can now bevel this. So select each edge here. Let's just focus on that alone. All right, so that one, that one, that one, 
that one, that one, that one, this one, this one. All right, that's all of them. Control B, pull. That's two, three. Let's just go with three. All right, but let's do the top as well. Not too much, just a little bit with three. And we have that. All right, it's got some weird shading, so let's put on the uh, weighted normal and normals auto smooth. All right, and we'll take that and we'll bring it in and push it into the surface like that. And my friends, I think we have done it. I think we have done it. Let me just have a quick look. All right. Let's get rid of that. And let's take this G and let's just move it roughly centered. Shift C to, to for the cursor. Save. And I like to take this in M, just move it to a class, or just rename the collection, whatever. Uh, I'll call this G1, if we grenade one, in case I make copies of it. And yeah, that, that's basically it. Let's have a look at the statistics. Just hold your breath here. All right, 134,000. You then could then decide if you want to lower the subdivisions. You know, that could certainly go down to one. And uh, yeah, you would probably want to have at least one. This one, you could probably get away without it. So anyways, you decide what you want to do about that. But that is the grenade or the detonator device. And the idea would be, if we take all of these things, what I tend to do is I would take this Control L to link. You get all that's linked. I, I made that into a separate object. I would take this and this and this and this and this. It is a drag that you have to have them all like that. You could parent them though. That, that, and that, and I think I've got everything. Let's just move it and see, yeah, okay. And I would take that and put it in its own collection. I would just call it top or something. And now I can just come back over here and grab the top, you know, select the top. And the idea is that, you know, this whole thing is down. And, you know, when you're ready to use it, you know, you just lift it up, the button goes on, press the button, hold it, as long as you hold it down, it's, safe and then you throw the thing or drop it or whatever all right so that is it for uh that thing you could then if you want if you don't want to render this you want to just take a image of that i like to copy these things um and if you want the viewport colors you can't really use just a collection uh so i would i would tend to copy it and with it selected go m new collection g2 I'll, i know i'm gonna you know my poly's gonna go through the roof but i'm gonna get rid of that later and you could just sort of rotate this a little bit to another position that you like or whatever and you could do another one uh, and g3 or something like that and you could rotate this in the x you know and in the z if you if you want to just get get a position that you like let's say you like that shut those off and control l and shut off your screen you know your screen keys you can press t to get rid of that as well take a screenshot of that or think about if you want the shadow on i don't know uh you know you might depending on your colors i'll leave it like that take a screenshot and then bring it into gimp or something and sharpen it and you know, do some color balancing and some post effects but that is it for grenade two so i know it's pretty simple to do but i think it looks pretty cool and uh, if you do model this, I hope you have uh, success with it and enjoy it. And uh, let me know if you have any problems or comments. Liking the video always helps me. And we'll see you next time.